<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the. I'm Troy Rawlings, and today I have a—I was almost about to say longtime friend. It seems like we've been longtime friends, and we finally yeah. got a chance to meet recently in Beverly Hills. She was here in Los Angeles taking care of some business. But I'm going to let you know all about this young lady, this amazing visionary, businesswoman, entrepreneur. But um, she has some amazing things that she's doing for women. It started as, I guess, something for couples that turned into something for women that turned into something for that, that, that. I'll let her explain. Give it up for the creator of Destination Diamond, Miss Shana Doshi. How are you, Shana? Hi, good morning. Doing great. Thank you, Troy. Super excited to be with you again today. And I've been, you know, keeping in touch with you, obviously, through social media over the last several years and really excited that we had a chance to meet in person uh, last month. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. I'm excited, too, because um, with um, I have some partners here that we're working on things and uh, the Rejuvenesh crew who travels around. Uh, Reg Lenny and, and Sue Alexander and I, uh, I, you and I started talking about Destination Diamond and uh, well, I'll let you explain it. Well, first off, I, I Tarantino a little bit, so I'll jump around. But uh, first off, let people know where you're originally from. Sure. Uh, born and raised in Michigan. Um, I moved to Southern California actually for two years after college and then move back to Michigan, which I currently live. So I love to travel. I don't know how long I'll stay in Michigan. I'm kind of waiting for the kids to get into that college, you know, age and who knows where, where the world will take us, so. That's right, that's right. And Destination Diamond initially, um, explain to people what Destination Diamond is. Well, I, I guess the origin of it and what it has become. Sure. So Destination Diamond launched uh, four years ago, and we started as an engagement planning company. And personal experience kind of taken into the entrepreneurial business approach, I went sh shopping for engagement rings actually with my sister and then my brother-in-law. So at the time, you know, it was kind of that, um, what, what are you looking for and how, how do you make sure that she actually gets the ring that she really wants without having to have them go together to the store and pick that out, right? You still want that special element of engagement. Right. And so I found it was really interesting to kind of see her taste versus his taste. But then at the end of it, we kind of married the two together. I was able to help her out and then I was able to help him out. And really guided him to, you know, picking out something that that she absolutely would fall in love with, and she did. So success story number one. From there, it kind of turned into this whole process of engagement. So after, you know, you get the ring. I mean, the special event is that actual proposal, but then where do you go from there? You know, my personal experience uh, within my engagement process was traveling to different places to go wedding dress shopping and I feel like there's more to than just the planning of the wedding there's a whole process that we sometimes forget about and I just really want to make that a special event for for everyone yeah and and nowadays because a lot has changed and and I love uh, I like to call myself romantic heart I love romantic comedies I love the essence of it the, the traveling but how important is that nowadays to be involved and and make it a journey as well? We talk about how the wedding is a day, the marriage is a lifetime. How important is the journey of that, um, I guess, the final part of the courtship into marriage, that engagement process? Because a lot of times people may think the engagement process, oh, we're going to pop the question here. But you make an ex, you, you, you've chosen to make it an experience where you find out more. How important is that process? Uh, so actually, I think it kind of goes twofold. So there's a process for the person that's proposing, right? Uh, the planning, the ring shopping, the location of proposal. Maybe it was a special memory that they created together. Maybe it was a first date location. So kind of tuning into, you know, pulling those ideas to the actual engagement is really step one. Step two would be 
all the celebrations afterwards. So you have, you know, bachelor parties or what we did was like a girls weekend. We also did a send off party rather than a traditional bachelor bachelorette party because we had friends that wanted to travel to Jamaica with us, but couldn't go. Right. So we had these small events that led up to that big wedding celebration and That's, it's really a process. I like that. I like, I like that, that scenario because sometimes you'll have people that now mind you destination diamond you'll hear that there's some phenomenal things going on so you want to just get your get your crew together get your purse strings together but but it's true some people are not going to be able to go at a friend that they uh when destination weddings was the big thing i guess they still they're getting back into it now um but i remember they had a a couple of people i know that had destination weddings they just had the whole the whole thing in jamaica or the whole thing in Barbados or wherever they went. And um, sometimes people won't be able to make it. Um, so I think that's in and, and now how how is that? Do you do anything in the virtual space as well for those people? If you're setting up a big event, is there a way to tie in virtual to it or are you all encompassing now with what you're doing? No, we actually planned um, a baby shower. So non wedding related, but um, same concept, right? Gathering friends and family from one location. And then it was during COVID, right? So it was a, a time when we couldn't gather in person. And we still wanted to celebrate for the couple, you know, experiencing, you know, um, having a baby for the first time. And so we were able to send gifts, but then also do a Zoom in order to capture the emotion of opening the gifts and thanking everyone. Uh, we sent her a cake. So she was able to have that same experience in her own home in the safety of you know her house with without having to expose herself to what was going on outside the world so right 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 and your experience um so now now i'm a i'm a tarantino little jump into sure. your experience so you said okay engagement is coming love this guy did you or i think you said did you design you design your ring though I actually, um, I have several partners that I do the design process with. So I am not a certified gemologist, but I have um, jewelers that are, and I really entrust in them to, you know, focus on their expertise. I bring the idea, I bring, you know, kind of the visual, and then through different like CAD drawings and, and virtual um, design elements we're able to actually pull together and, and get the approval from the person who's actually you know purchasing that that ring lord you're gonna get people that's women sitting <laughs> like i can design my ring you know, like, ah! <laughs> well the fun thing is is i get designs from women too it's not just you know the men or the women that are proposing to the other party it's it's oh my gosh this is my dream ring can you help me is there any way you know and so there's a lot of like um, social media snooping, I would say, a lot of Pinterest looking. And so, you know, for people that want to surprise uh, the person, then it's such a different experience than the ones that have it already visually planned. So it's just right. really pulling, pulling the elements together and making sure that, um, you know, it, it's a very happy and joyous occasion. And the end goal is that, you know, people aren't receiving something that they don't necessarily love. So really there to help both parties. Right, because for all intents and purposes, this is it's it's not just about the ring, but the ring is something symbolic and it's a piece of jewelry that this person ideally will keep for a lifetime. Back in the day, you know, I mean, we re-up rings and do extra stuff to it now, but back in the day, that one ring, you know, how many people you heard was like, well, this this was my grandmother's ring that she it was like 1919. This ring, <laughs> you know. So speaking of that, though, that's one of my favorite projects to work on is those heritage stones. So pulling mm. those family heirlooms into a new design, you know, sometimes, you know, you have somebody that will love the idea of passing it on from generation to generation. They're not looking at how big they're not looking at, you know, all the other elements. It is such a meaningful piece of jewelry. In other cases, it's the exact opposite. They're like, I don't want grandma's ring. I want the big, I want the bold. And so you really have to gauge your audience. And so initially it was, you know, Destination Diamond was romance, the experience, the all this wonderful stuff. And then you started evolving. The, the company started evolving. Your vision started evolving into the entire 
woman, the entire person. How did that transition occur? When did that when did you shift and see that it was more of a lifestyle company? So it actually happened during COVID, Troy. We were, you know, all in lockdown. And um, personally for me, I was somebody who had practiced yoga for over 20 years. And so I decided during that period of time that I wanted to really dive into the yoga training and become certified myself. And the idea of me as a businesswoman bringing together not only the element of girls trips, right, or retreats, but understanding that those could also play into the engagement process. So we launched actually uh, this past summer, our first Destination Diamond Yoga Retreat, which we traveled to Sedona, Arizona. We kind of um, chose Mm -hmm. that location as kind of our benchmark. One, it was a place I've never been. Two, it is a vortex of energy. So for anyone who has or hasn't been there, definitely check that out. Um, And then also, my big goal going through the training process of, of becoming a yoga teacher was the experience that I can bring um, for women maybe to travel to India at some point. So it's going to be a much bigger um, experience than just these small yoga events. It's going to be really a very spiritual, a very um, healing, uh, filled with wellness. So we're really just trying to tap into you know all the things that we experienced during COVID, a little bit of charity of giving back, um, very much a proponent of philanthropy and just trying to tap into experiences for women who may or may not have a circle of friends or family that they travel like this with. So really opening up the doors to in, in be inclusive and help other people find that space to, to travel and do something for yourself. And you do have a lot of women that already have, uh, we, uh, believe me, we get jealous. We're, you and I have talked about this. I'm working on putting together a men's retreat because we don't retreat. Women women can start <laughs> off like, it's a girl's, we're just going on a girl's night out. And then she's come back, honey, it's going to be a girl's weekend. It's like, what's happening now? It's like, we just got to get away. We just got to get away. You know, <laughs> women can decide like, you know what? Angie had a breakup. All of us are leaving. You know, leaving where? We, we just need two days. You know, women will retreat, you know, and and go away. And also women are very good about getting their crew together. They have four, five, six women and and roll out 10 women and they'll roll out. So Destination Diamond, which you guys uh, and some of the events and stuff are going to be perfect for it. But what about that? There's some women out there. This has been a big thing, especially in the self self care, self help, self love time that we're in. There's some women that feel like they need a new crew. Mm-hmm. They've, so, they've separated during 2020. They've, they've changed in their life. Or they were the, I know, I know so many women who are just hardcore business women. And they're getting to the point that they realize they're in the next portion of their life. They're, they're not no longer in their 20s, no longer in their 30s. And they need to do more for themselves. For those women that may be traveling by themselves or coming into this, um, tell them about the the haven, the safe place you've created. How how does that fit them? Because some people, they think, oh, I don't have anybody to travel with. I've heard that. Sure. Well, what's interesting is even speaking from the first retreat, the women that came did not know each other. So I was that conduit of introducing them really for the first time. And now it has created hopefully a lifelong friendship. So I always say, if you if you dare to just kind of reach outside your comfort zone and you're looking for, you know, everybody needs time off. Everyone needs that something to look forward to. And knowing that I will be there to help navigate those conversations, um, engage in those relationships. Literally, you could come as a single, you could come with one or or two friends, and by the end of it, you're going to leave with a a whole new crew of people that probably you'll look forward to traveling with again, just because the experience that we create is really about kind of owning internally what you're really searching for, And then also, you know, making sure that you make it a priority to continue to take time out for yourself. I'm going to make sure I tag Diamond Dust in this. (laughs) You know, a photographer, (laughs) Zoe's godmother's Diamond Dust Photography. And she she was a a travel agent. I'm not going to say her age because I can't say her age, but she doesn't look her age at all. But (laughs) she was a travel agent 
when they still uh, they the hotels and resorts still sent for travel agents to come and just chill with them yep. so that they could tell people about it. So but she loves to travel. But same same scenario. I, I've talked to so many people, men, men. We got to get the men together. We got to do something for the men. men guys, we're going we're gonna to work it out. But I love what Shane is doing. I love her energy. And Shane is going to um, be helping with a number of things. But um, um, tell me about tell me about um, the, I've been hearing a lot of people. And we may. Um, well, first, here, let me rewind. You mentioned something about charities. What's going on with Destination Diamond with charities and charitable giving and how how can people get involved with that as well? So um, I would say about four to five years ago, I really entered the space of mentorship. So I've been on platforms of local charities, um, national charities. Um, I want to get to a global um, forum for charity. But I found, you know, even though we're so busy and we have so much to do, myself included, four kids, married, full-time job, Destination Diamond is, is literally something that I've evolved over the last four years as, as a secondary hustle, right? This is not my main thing, but the importance is I have always made time for my mentorships and for the act of collecting, maybe it's funds or maybe it's gifts, especially around the holiday season. So this year we're actually going to be partnering with a local charity um, I will announce it once it's defined. We're still in the process of outlining, you know, exactly how we're going to go about this partnership. But um, whether it's a, a donation of, of monetary goods or it's a um, item that maybe would help support uh, local women and children and shelters, um, we just want to be able to give back because personally for me, I feel like I'm so blessed. I have more than I need. I don't need extra stuff. I just want to be able to help those that are less fortunate and really pay it forward with with every ounce of of energy that I can. And then I ask my friends and family to please help and, and contribute too because I can't do it alone. It has to be a community effort. And sometimes five dollars or twenty dollars or a hundred dollars, you don't even know how far that can go. And um, I think we've all seen over the last you know few years that the power of giving is is really um, something that. You, you either learn it or you become it. And I'm, I'm really in the process of becoming it. That's great. That's awesome. And uh, we need to, we need to know some investigative reporting because women, women find out certain things. What is it about Tulum? Um, is it just that it was one of the places that were open for people to travel? Because all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's like the, the traveling to Dubai. All of a sudden you see people Going to Dubai, I see people online. I'm going to Dubai. We going to Dubai. I was like, what? First of all, how you find out about Dubai being the the great new destination? But Tulum like blew up. It became the spot, but not just a spot for people to go and be at the pool and stuff like that. I know women that took um, health, mental health. I know people that had health issues, high blood pressure, this and that, and took trips to Tulum. Like right as they were finding out certain things, literally, and I was like, "What is what is going on in Tulum?" So what what attract? Because I think you, you mentioned Destination Diamond has an event coming up in Tulum. We so do. what what became what what attracts what energy? Like you mentioned something. I'm glad you mentioned about Arizona as well. But what attracted you to Tulum? What is it about Tulum that's attracting people there that you think? So uh, for me, I actually started hearing several friends um, and family members and coworkers starting to talk about Tulum as their place. They've been there multiple times. They like to travel back there every year. And so for me, that's Jamaica. OK, so Tulum is new, even though it is Mexico. I think most people are familiar with either Cancun or Cabo. I've never been to Tulum, so I'm really um, leaning on the expertise of people who have previously been there to really kind of help navigate us on some of the agenda and the locations. But it's also also a very, um, I want to say like uh, shabby, chic, boho vibe. And so that's kind of the brand that we're trying to create too with these retreats is, you know, you want to feel a little bit carefree and, and relaxed, obviously. Right. Um, the water for me is a very calming place. So, uh, for me, I really wanted to go from first experiences in the desert. Second experience is going to be, um, the ocean or the, the Gulf. And then also 
it's not too far for those of us that will be traveling from Michigan. It's not a horrible flight um, to get down to, to Mexico. So it'll be an international trip for us. Um, I think most people that feel comfortable traveling right now are, are excited about getting out of here in you know the middle of February when it's you know cold and snowing. But also, I think it's the vibe that Tulum creates. So. Love it. I love it. Yeah. So. And um, I know um, I don't want to hold you up too long because we could talk. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in depth about now. Are you, are you going to be doing any co-ed events at all? We've talked about certain things, but are you going to be doing any co-ed events? Or are you going to focus mainly on building up the girls right now? You hear my, hear my tone change. Definitely. Yes, yes. I've had actually uh, several requests from from other men um, to incorporate them, even in the yoga events, right? So yes. I don't want to be exclusive to all. I want to start obviously including, um, you know, some co-ed opportunities. Uh, we might have couples opportunities coming up. We may have singles opportunities coming up. Um, the, the yoga will be focused on those who either don't know and want to learn yoga. And, and for those who might feel a little intimidated with that, it's really an intro and then we can go into more advanced poses as we go. It's not something that you have to be an expert at yoga to attend. It's really about the experience. Um, for the co-ed events, it's going to be really about, you know, traveling to a new destination that you may or may not have been to and pulling together a really great long weekend event. So a lot of good food is incorporated. Um, for those of you, it, it can be, you know, alcohol or non-alcohol based. It is truly custom to kind of that um, vibe or that intention of, of what that event is, is really geared, geared towards. So we will not leave the guys out. We might incorporate a little golf and maybe some gar smoking into a future event. So we will uh, definitely custom um, those events based on the audience. Well, golf is your thing. And, and I've been saying uh, pre-pandemic, I've been saying, look, I'm going to go over here. Griffith Park has some great um pros i'm a learn and i keep saying i'm a learn i'm a learn but golf is your thing that's a yeah. one of the things i started golfing when i was 12. thank you to my father for introducing me to the game it has opened so many opportunities for me just from a networking perspective um, but also i'm starting to find people coming to me kind of gradually about hey i really want to learn but i've never golfed before listen i'm the perfect person to go with because half the time i don't even keep score like this is not competitive for me this is really just getting people out onto the golf course or to the driving range, you know, working with pros um, either that we can find for you or, or ones that I know, and really just getting you comfortable showing up to these events and able to at least swing the club comfortably. Man, Jay Phillips, uh, he's a comedian, but he's a he's an avid golfer because I was asking, I was like, everybody, it was an older guy who was a client of mine years ago in Baltimore when I had my barber shop, and he said, I was like, yeah, the guys are going out golfing. He said, look, Troy, don't don't go out with your friends. <laughs> go and find a pro. <laughs> That's how he talked to you. Go and find a pro <laughs> and learn the right way first because you'll pick up their bad habit. And I was like, OK. So years later, I still haven't done it yet. And then just uh, talking to Jay, I was like, I heard it's good for networking. He said, Troy, it's good for networking if you can keep up with the game. Let me tell you, I've seen some disastrous meetings <laughs> on the golf course because when you're when you're out there and if you're doing doubles or if you're playing, the game goes according to the two people going together. So let me tell you guys that want to get into golfing for networking, learn the basics because you got if you're go if you're throwing the ball off course, it slows down the game and the meeting is probably not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> honesty comes in right like if you come right. in telling the group you're a new golfer and a lot of people are willing to help some may step back and say okay i know how today's gonna go we're gonna be chasing balls all over but if they know that ahead of schedule you know yeah yeah don't go out there no no i've been there yeah yeah i've done it <laughs> exactly. no, no, I'm good. <laughs> yes and everybody's looking at their watch like i thought today was going to be uh <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, charity yeah. event for golf, right? I mean, those oh, are just totally different, things. totally different if it's charity, you know. Yeah. But and that's another thing for people that want to, um, because you have that that interest. So 
are you going to be working with some companies and some people that may want to set up things, especially if they want to set up things where they love golfing, they want to do a charitable event, they want the wives to come, or the women who golf. I know a lot of women who golf. So the women who golf, if you set up a event for them or, you know, you know, different destinations where people can go and get some good golfing. In. Absolutely. So I actually um, am part of a group uh, at my corporate job where we've actually started a women's golf league. And it was really for that intention of having a seat at the table or having that space to be able to talk business outside of the office. Right. So uh, we're looking at a couple of destinations. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to lock anything in in the next six months. It might be a next summer type event. Um, but I will definitely keep everybody in the loop and, and let you know where we travel to. So if you're interested in that and yoga is not your thing, maybe a golf resort and a golf, you know, trip might be more up your alley. So now I do love and, I, and I'll touch on it. I do love the fact that you said doing a yoga yoga event. I'm sure there are others, a yoga event going to India as well. Yes, that is my ultimate goal. So I'm actually going to be traveling there in February um, on personal business, but I also have the opportunity to, while I'm there, um, take a few classes and really kind of home into, you know, this is the motherland of yoga. So um, the timing actually worked out really well. We're going to be going early February, right before the Tulum retreat. So I'm going to have some really cool goodies I'll be able to bring back for the women and really absorb all that amazing energy and pass it forward to anyone that will be into them. Very cool. Very yep. cool. Shana. Yes. Doshi. I appreciate you so much. Let people know how to get in touch with you um, and how they can, uh, how they can keep up on everything that's going on with Destination Diamond. Sure. So I try to streamline everything through Instagram. Um, my name is Destination Diamond. And you can either, you know, send me an IM or, you know, try to connect with me by following some of our excursions. I post a lot of uh, personal and um, business travel. So you might see me popping in different places. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you, you know, how do you travel so much? And I said, I make it a priority. You know, some people spend their money on other things. I spend my money on travel and experiences. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I really want to be able to pass it on to other people. So thank you so much, Troy. Appreciate you. Oh, more to come. We got a lot, a lot more to come. I, I appreciate you taking time out. It's great to finally start pulling all this together. It's been a, like you said, it's been a crazy three years. It seems like the time has been crazy, but it's time for people to get to a, a, a new level and create their new normal, create Absolutely. the new normal for their lives, not going backwards, but going forward. So. I appreciate what you're doing with Destination Diamond and everything you guys are doing. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So talk to you soon. Talk soon and um, have a good weekend. You too. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye.